and welcome. Welcome to Art Underfoot. We're happy to have this afternoon to spend some time with you to uh, introduce you to Catherine Bertulli's latest rug collection. She's collaborated with a number of New England artists to produce some really, really stunning rugs. And uh, we'd like to just take you through all of them. Um, before we dive, dive in, I just a couple of kind of logistical notes. Um, feel free if to uh, ask any questions on the chat button at the bottom of your screen. You can just, um, if you put some questions, your questions in there. And depending on what makes the most sense with, with each question, we will either answer them as, as we're going through the presentation, but we'll also have a Q&A at the end um, that we can address them. All right, terrific. So why don't we uh, get started? Obviously, what I'd first like to do is introduce Catherine to you all. And Catherine is a trained fine artist who has had a long career in fine art, but she also worked for, I think, believe it was 17 years at Stark Carpet in the Boston Design Center. So she has, um, you know, she's picked the right business to get into because she's married her experience and her passion for both to starting this new, uh, there's a rug business of which she has a few collections. Um, but Catherine, I'll, I'll let you tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, uh, thanks, Mimi. Uh, just let me uh, welcome everyone who's listening today and uh, participating. Uh, this is a really exciting moment for me. I would say that I originally planned a first launch of my collection in the spring of uh, last spring at the Boston Design Center, but that was of course postponed because of the uh, because of the pandemic. And there was also a fall launch in the fall that was um, delayed as well. So I'm very grateful to Tony First of First and Four of Boston Design Week who suggested that uh, this is an alternative way to uh, reach my collection to the public. Um, for most of my life, I've been an artist, primarily working on paper with gouache and also oil on canvas and linen. I graduated from Massachusetts College of Art in 1972 and have been making art ever since. I know you're in some museums locally, right. Brandeis. Yeah, I, I have a work in the Fog Art Museum at Harvard, uh, the Rose at Brandeis, the Cordova, and the Danforth. And Catherine, can you just share a little bit about um, your transition fairly recently into sculpture? Yes, well, I've been making sculpture from industrial grade aluminum foil. And these have been exhibited at Fall River, Verona, Italy, and at the Danforth in Framingham. Um, so how'd you end up in the rug business? Uh, well, <laughs> After start. <laughs> in about 1989, my then husband, who was a scenic designer for ballet, was approached by Star Carpet for a position as artist at the Boston Design Center showroom. He didn't take the position, but I had been working with him on uh, ballet and rendering and uh, CADs for him and had become familiar with historical styles and fabrics. And so I pro proposed myself for the position and I was accepted on a trial basis. I was at Stark, like you said, for 17 years. And my first job was a Portuguese needlepoint. You don't see them anymore, so you know how long ago that was. <laughs> and I worked with many of the leading New England interior designers. And I worked in a full range of uh, projects like residences, hotels, restaurants, government buildings, and one yacht. And my largest design, which is displayed here, was an Obasan style rug 46 by 26 feet for the Rhode Island State House reception room. And on my honeymoon four years ago, we stopped by to see how it was doing. And it's oxidized a little bit, which is, you know, has a beautiful patina to it, uh, but it still looks great. Stunning. I can't even imagine the amount of work that went into it. It was, it was done by committee. I mean, everybody was oh, very nice. Does. Yeah. <laughs> and this one was so huge. It was, it was brought in in pieces and then sewn and taped on site. Really something, right? And well, so why don't you tell us a little bit of why you decided to launch your own business now? Well, 
my goal is to move the quality affordability point for custom designs. I'm willing to keep my margin small, mostly because I really like designing rugs and also because I want to bring custom rugs within the reach of most people. I want to have a hand in recreating the wonderful tradition where you have a custom rug, you cherish it in your family, and you pass it on. Great. I, sounds great. <laughs> Why don't we, I'd love to um, introduce everyone to the artist who Catherine has partnered in in this latest collection, um, which is, I, as I said, um, is you know what we're looking at. She's she's partnered with different New England um, artists. So our our first artist that I'd love for you to meet is Shelley Reed. Shelley, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, Shelley is a painter who's trained at the Museum School in Boston. She's represented by the Sears Painting Gallery in New York, as well as Visions West Contemporary, which is out west. Um, while she was living in London years ago. She spent a lot of time at museums and really fell in love with art history, which has prompted, which really kind of prompted her into incorporating art history into her pieces. Um, but I'll let Shelley take you through, you know, um, a little more about what she does and um, her inspiration and how she came to working with with Catherine on on the rug that they they chose. Thanks, Mimi and. Thanks to Catherine for this terrific opportunity. Um, as Mimi mentioned, I was in London. I had just graduated from art school and I was really struggling with the idea of what to paint. A lot of people can figure out the technical issues of painting, but um, the, the what to paint was, uh, I was finding difficult. And I was surrounded by all this fabulous art history. So I ended up taking details from fabulous uh, paintings from art history and reintroducing them and often in a very large way. So my work is really a mashup of images from about two or 300 years from art history. And I always attribute uh, the, the original artists in the title of the paintings. The one that you're looking at is a, an almost 50 foot long painting called In Dubious Battle. And there are about 23 or 24 artists that are referenced in there. And uh, I, I look for images that when I, when I look for images to collage from, um, I'm basically looking for images that I feel still have some relevance for today. And I use black and white partially because I, I love color, but I think it's very seductive. And I'm trying to make images that are beautiful without the, the traditional trappings of beauty. Uh, this one, this is actually a very large painting. It's a life-size horse. It's oil on paper. Normally I work oil on canvas. So this is, you know, just in terms of the mashing up from art history, the head is from one artist and the body is from, you know, another from George Stubbs. Uh, no one necessarily knows that. So my goal is to make a dramatic, interesting, compelling image that, um, that stands on its own and is somewhat theatrical. But if you know where it came from, it adds that extra layer. And it talks about how things that were painted 300 years ago still, you know, uh, have relevance today. And this one also, the tiger is from Edward Landseer, an English painter, and the background is from a painter from, uh, I think, the 1600s. So, you know, this, this painting, I, I wanted to capture something where it was both, um, you know, the tiger is both threatening but also very vulnerable. So um, both looking at us and, and in a challenging way, um, but, at, you know, sort of inviting but also threatening. Beauty un underlying um, danger. And that's, pre that's pretty much what I've been doing for over 30 years. A very focused uh, practice. This, and, oh. this and this one is, is the um, image that, the, that is the rug. It's uh, ribboned flowers. Uh, this is after an artist named Abraham Mignon, who was working in the mid 1600s. He actually died very young. He was a very famous during his time. And, uh, you know, in, in the original, this actually, this painting I still own, and it's still, it has a partner called ribboned flowers. So this is, sorry, ribboned fruit. So it's what fruit and flowers. And in the middle is a cartouche with a very distant landscape. So I pulled out one side of the painting and just wanted to revel in the beauty. It's gorgeous. And the detail is, is really incredible. Um, Catherine, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you chose this painting 
to translate into a rug. And I know you had to make some adjustments to the detail, uh, but why don't you take us through the process? But first, I wanted to say that I was only able to work with these wonderful artists because they were so generous in their understanding of my need to have to modify the original work. So uh, I really appreciated that. Also, I saw Shelley's work at the Pittsburgh Art Museum and was blown away at the tour de force of, of her work. Um, this piece I looked at uh, and thought that if I removed the frame and made some smaller changes, uh, it would make a fabulous rug. Uh, now, this is an early CAD where in this case, I outlined, I, I took away the butterfly and some dewdrops and I outlined every flower and leaf with black to create that black field to isolate the beautiful flowers. And this was made in a hundred knots per inch wool, New Zealand wool. I think the next image shows the CAD that I gave to the mill. Now, you see that there were 17 colors and on the right it's listed the corresponding yarn palm. And a CAD is, uh, just specifies to the mill how the layout and the color placement is going to be. This is the sample with the yarn palms. And I know we're going to get into it for, you know, more at the end, but you, you can do custom color, you know, customize with different yes. colors for each piece. Yes, it can be custom sized, um, different colors. I wouldn't want to destroy the bouquet that uh, Shelley's very subtle brush has done um, beautiful, is beautiful. And the way I have to translate it into wool. Um, so, so I would prefer to just, in this rug, just change the color of the background. Yeah. It really is so stunning. Do you want to take us a little more through the process of how it got from Shelley's piece to oh, a yes. finished product? So um, after the CAD, um, I would, um, I would, after the CAD, I would send that to the mill mm -hmm. and I would have a small sample made and, and that would set, be sent to me to verify the colors and the quality and the knotting. And I have a few process, uh, a few pictures of the process from that point. And, um, the picture shows the dyeing process. Now dyeing the yarn uh, takes up most of the time in making the rug. It's, it's getting the colors right and dyeing the yarn uh, is very time consuming. And the, my mills typically dye all the wool uh, in these large vats. And the dyes that I use and my mills use are Swiss made AZO free uh, dyes. And AZO is a carcinogenic that was used in the carpet industry and is now banned in Europe and California. And I won't use a mill that uses these dyes. And this picture is a stock picture and our, this is how the yarn is hand spun. And the next picture shows ribbon flowers on the loom. The Weavers are on the other side. This is the back of the rug being hand knotted. You can just see the beautiful, beautiful shadings and um, detail that the weavers are in putting into this rug. Shelly, it must be something to see it on a loop. <laughs> I love these pictures. They're great. Yeah, I bet. Thanks, thanks. Now, after it's taken off the loom, it's given a haircut where they, uh, have this machine that will shear off all the yarns so it's even and flat. Then it's washed and it's dried. And this is what the rug looks like. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Uh, yeah, absolutely breathtaking. I am so pleased. Now this is, like I said, a five by seven, a hundred knots per square inch New Zealand wool. Uh, this is, uh, the next is a little video of the sample just showing the close up detail. Mm. With, yeah. And I think of this with each rug that we go through, but I, it's just, you know, your kind of head spins of the, as how it would be a starting point to a room. 
Yes. You know, and it's just, it's just stunning, you know, you all the this? kind of different ways you could go, but it's Where really, it'll this be many? in like a, a great room perhaps, or I don't yeah. know, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you could do so much with it, but it's just beautiful. Thank you. And you wouldn't have to do that much with it because the rug would set the tone, you know, yeah. that would be the, the yeah. centerpiece. And this is just a, a sample of an alternative just to maybe, you know, punch up the background a little bit. And I know we're going to get, again, dig deeper into customizing colors, but, um, d you know, Catherine, I just, if you want to just kind of sure. well, let people know yeah. a little bit about that you can do it. Well, I'll <laughs> be guess. talking about customizing the rugs later, but for now I can say that it would be pretty easy to use different colors and get a sample made for the client yeah. and examine it before having the full rug made. And that really doesn't add much to the cost of the rug at all. And this one in particular, you're, you would recommend just swapping out the background as opposed yeah, to... Yes, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch the beautiful um, flowers. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Oh, great. Thanks. Thank you. Shelly, thank you so much. This, thanks, oh, Shelly. Your stuff is just stunning. Thank you. I love the colors and yeah, it's very, it's stunning. Um, the next artist who uh, Catherine has collaborated with that I'd like to introduce you to is Adria Arch. Hi, Adria. Thanks for Hi. joining us today. Thank you. Um, and similar to Catherine, she's recently changed her medium from works on paper to sculpture. And she is currently a member of the Boston Sculptures Gallery. Um, you can see her works at places like the Boston Public Library, as well as the Library of Congress, among others. Um, welcome, Adria. Oh, thanks, Amy. Uh, why you can probably tell us a little bit more about yourself than I, I than I can do justice. And if you want to tell us a little about yourself and take us through, we have a few pieces that we can look at before we get to the piece that you partnered with Catherine on. Well, sure. Yeah. Um, these sculptures that I'm doing now are really an outgrowth of my painting practice, and I'm an abstract painter. Uh, although I've dabbled in. Uh, figuration as well, but my my main mode of working is abstraction. And um, my work is, uh, you know, explores human movement. It's about, you know, I, I love dance. I, I look, I, I love to dance and, and watch ballet and modern dance and all that. And so, and I just love human movement. So the works to me express a feeling of movement. Um, and this one here is, yeah, the, the one before was a, a, an install. So my work is, it tends to be an installation, meaning it's, it, these are sculptures made of lightweight plastic that you can walk through, literally walk through and have this experience of being in a very special environment. Um, this piece is from an exhibit that I, uh, I had some work in last year um, at the Fitchburg Art Museum. Um, and it was in response to the founder, Eleanor Norcross's uh, collection of her work. She was a late uh, 19th century um, woman artist who uh, founded the Fitchburg Art Museum and she was an artist in her own right. And so she, this, this work responded to the collection of work of, of her own and also the things that she collected on her travels and brought back to Fitchburg. Um, and this is from a, a show that's actually up right now at the Cahoon Museum of American Art on uh, the Cape in Katuit. Mm -hmm. And this installation is called Interference. And uh, these, uh, sculpt these plastic sculptures um, sort of float overhead. This is the picture of what I've got in, in the um, lobby there. And then uh, other pieces float in and out of the other rooms in this lovely small museum, a little gem of a museum and on the Cape. So that was, that was really a fun experience. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, what I've been doing. And um, as you can see, I love color, I love combinations, I love form. My work is really about shape and form. So um, yeah, Catherine and I have been friends for a long time. And when she told me about her efforts to start a, a, a carpet company, I was very excited about having some of my work turned into a carpet, so we collaborated. And um, after going through a lot of ideas, actually, this is really interesting. This is not a painting. It is a monoprint uh, on paper. It's actually small, 
um, it's maybe the whole thing, the, the real one is about eight by 10 inches, something like that. So, um, and, and, and uh, it's a, a simple process using actually acrylic paint to create the print, you get these wonderful transparencies. And Catherine and I both thought that would be so much fun to turn into a rug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It's great, I love it. Thank you. Catherine, why don't you share a little bit about the process for this particular one? Because I think it was a little different. Adrian and I have been friends for many years, so it was really natural to, and I love her work, so it was really uh, natural to approach her first. And uh, so this is her monoprint ripple. And you can see that it has lots of transparencies and also little um, spray, like a spray technique, um, just from the pulling of the paper from the, <clears> the the surface that she's making the print from. And um, so how to transfer this into a wool rug? Uh, that was my <laughs> challenge. And so if you think of French pointillistic uh, painting, you're not too far off with my approach. And you can see there are, uh, this is a CAD that the mill sent me. And you can see the uh, little dots and uh, two, color, two colors being placed next to each other, and that's all the tweeting. This, uh, this is a five by 10, and it's hand tufted with New Zealand wool with a 20 mix of viscose to give it a little sheen. And the navy blue area is a low pile, so there's a high and low pile. It's a cut uh, quality. Now, I could also have made it in a loop uh, quality to it, achieve the same kind of rich texture, but we'll see in a moment why I didn't do that. And I don't know if anyone's seen this before, but this is a sample of how hand tufted rugs are made. We have, there's a tufting gun, the yarn goes through the tufting gun. It can be one to five uh, strands of yarn. The CAD is blown up on and transferred on a cotton backing. And that's what the weavers use for a guide. And this short video shows a close-up of the rug. Look how look how beautiful all that tweeting is. It's great. I am. I this this rug. Can I just say it is my, one of my favorite, my all-time favorite possessions. I have this rug now in my bedroom, and every morning I get up to look at it, and I just I adore it. <laughs> it's beyond my expectation, really. <laughs> And this is a close up and up in the upper right hand corner, you can see a little bit of the viscose and the sheen that it gives. And again, you can see all the beautiful tweeting that the mill did. And <laughs> obviously Bisbee would not be so happy if her claws got caught in loop yarn. The dog really loves her. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I use cut. Usually when you have an animal, you use cut. I'm glad Bisbee loves, loves the rug. And there she is barking. There she is barking, exactly. <laughs> Her approval. Uh, and here are some other uh, colorways that I'm uh, making for clients. These so are great. The and, you know, similarly to the other rug, which is Shelly's rug, you just, I mean, obviously <laughs> they're pieces of art, um, but they, they're such wonderful springboards to rooms. You know, you, you're they, there's so much that you can do with them, and the colors in this are great, and all kinds of ideas flowing about I how to. I wanted to show these examples of, you know, mm -hmm. you could go a little, you know, more tonal. You can go creamy and uh, blues, grays, and whites. It's very adaptable. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just in general, Catherine, can you sh share, you know, for this, like how many different palms you used for you know, uh, the original one that Adria has, or. That I looked today and it was 12 colors. Okay. And that's why when you want to have a limited amount of uh, colors where the tweeting, it really expands it. So it ends up, I think it ended up being like 24 colors, but we originally only had 12 palms. Yeah. Really fun. Really Thanks. fun. Thanks, Adrian, for joining us. Thank you. Um, Lisa Hawk has also worked with Catherine or partnered with Catherine on a really, really fun rug. Um, Lisa does her work in a variety of mediums, including watercolor, oil on wood and mosaics. And she can take us through a little more about 
what the mediums, but her pieces are inspired by nature and they're often very colorful and very whimsical. Um, her works are in, she's in numerous private and public collections such as the Boston Children's Hospital and Boston's MFA. I think this picture is from a, a dentist's office. <laughs> it's really, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And um, I'll let Lisa kind of take us through a little bit more about herself and her, her different works. Thank you so much, Mimi. And thank you, Catherine, for oh, this sure. amazing opportunity. I have always wanted to turn my work into fabrics and rugs. I, I've, I made some rugs when I was in college and I had some understanding of the process. And when Catherine came to me saying she wanted to translate one of my prints into a rug, I was just delighted. Um, this is an example of a mosaic that I did for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Um, oh, it's, okay. Each panel is 17 by 23, I think. And there are eight panels and they wrap around a desk. And this was one of the first mosaics that I did after years of being primarily a painter and a printmaker, I got involved with this medium partly because I was offered some opportunities to create art that was going to be in public spaces. And I wanted to come up with a durable medium that also played off of the color and patterning that I absolutely love to play with in all of my work. So I have been doing mosaics now for about 15 years. This is an example of another one that I did for a park in Boston called the Frida Garcia Park. It's off of Clarendon Street in Boston. It's a 22 foot long mosaic, which, which should live very happily in New England weather for many, many decades to come because it's an extremely durable medium. In this case, I worked with children and had them design all of the birds that populate my landscape. So it was kind of a wonderful collaboration with children from the community and then my own work to create a landscape that was really populated with a lot of fanciful creatures. Um, I also work in oil on wood. This piece is called Red Bug in the Garden. And this is 24 by 36. And I love flattened out patterns and um, I love you know, being inspired by the natural world, but kind of creating my own abstract shapes and my own vocabulary that I, I use, I interpret, I interpret places I've traveled and things I've seen, but in my own way to sort of make them into these fanciful landscapes. So um, the piece that Catherine chose uh, for the rug is called Chittering and Chattering. It's a, a linoleum block print that's 36 by 24, and it's made up of six images that actually come together to make one big image. And I had printed these images individually, but also as one complete image, which is the one Catherine was so attracted to. And we worked together to sort of eliminate those lines so that the rug doesn't include the fact that they were made out of six individual pieces. It's more one complete image. Um, so um, this is part of a series of linoleum block prints that were kind of inspired by Audubon's very large scale bird prints. And um, this one is, is a bunch of songbirds that are kind of, um, well, they're chittering and chattering. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, no, it's great. K Catherine, why don't you take us through kind of how you adapted this? I saw, I first saw this, um, uh, at the Bethard Gang uh, uh, Gallery down, down on Harrison Avenue. And I saw it like a couple of times and I just was attracted to it and I thought it would make a, just a, a fun uh, rug. And so working with Lisa, we eliminated the, the lines and cleaned it up. Uh, I also felt, I mean, the rug is very directional. You have the water and the sand on the bottom, the sky on top. But I felt for a rug that I wanted it uh, to have be a little less directional without destroying Lisa's uh, sensibilities. So uh, working with Lisa, I took the pattern of the sand and the water on the bottom and put it on the top. And I also reversed one of the, uh, the bird upper in the upper left corner and reversed it. And here it is an indigo and coral. This is the CAD to the mill. This is uh, hand knotted 80 knots per square inch New Zealand wool. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, if we go, and go to the next image, you yeah. can see what uh, 
I decided to do on the field, the navy blue, the indigo, is to ha use a technique called a brash. And that's when the yarn is irregularly dyed. And this is a technique that is used in very fine oriental and uh, Persian rugs. Yeah. And here's a short video of a close up. Just lush and beautiful. And you can see a close up of the abrash. Stunning. Yeah. And here's just a couple of fun colorways that I think it could go very tonal or is also bold. Mm -hmm. And um, as I indicated before, there's a lot of freedom in choosing uh, colorways to right. fit what your, your room scheme is like. Right. Or even just what type of a room, you know, with the different colorways, you kind of think of different rooms that it could be used in. Like a family Bedroom room. Or a family room, dining yeah, room, yeah. really any room. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's stunning. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi, Dennis. Welcome, uh, Dennis. Our really? the next um, artist who collaborated with with Catherine is Dallas, Dennis Geller, and he's had a long career in mathematics and business. He served. You know, he has been a university professor. He's written textbooks. He's worked in software development. Um, but then in 2014, he decided to to devote his time full time. I guess, to photography. Um, and even though it's been a relatively short career, full, a full-time career in photography, it's been, um, he's been very successful. He's been in 20, he's been accepted into 24 juried competitions. He's received honorable mentions in shows both in LA and on the East Coast, um, including in the prestigious Griffin Museum of Winchester. So welcome, Dennis. Thanks uh, for sharing your work. Um, yeah. You want to just kind of tell us a little bit more about yourself and the work that you're you're doing. Well, myself is I take pictures when I'm not reading or staring into space. Uh, this one was actually I woke up as I do sometimes in the middle of the night, and there was a little bit of reflected light from outside. And I just saw this scene and I went and I grabbed my tripod. This is a, a long exposure because it was very dark, um, but I really loved it. Um, doesn't show here, but there's a little touch of pink in the flowers. Um, and then I have another picture in which, this is a picture hanging on the wall in that other picture. Uh, uh, this is a more recent picture. And this uh, received an honorable mention at the uh, Plymouth, uh, Massachusetts uh, Art Society uh, last year. And this one is the one that was in the Griffin Museum. And here I was actually interested in trying to represent the passage of time. So you can see that these two people are really the same person. Um, and I'm trying to show, bring out what's changed as time passes. So things like the backgrounds, which don't change very much, tend to be very dark in this series. But in this particular one, which was taken on Causeway, right? I think right over here is where there's a uh, statue of hockey players. But all of a sudden, there was some big, cloud of smoke on the street so i just ran to plant my tripod and take a picture of it and then this is the one that catherine chose yes great cracked ice and the uh, story here is that actually i had just bought a new camera and i was living in somerville and i was walking along the mystic river and there was this patch of ice and this was actually the first picture that i took with that camera Really, that's neat. Catherine, how do you decide that this would be a good rug translation? Well, a lot of um, rugs today are showing an all over pattern of um, a natural pattern. Um, this is a very uh, it's, uh, popular um, kind of uh, look. And um, I really like the tonality of the photograph. 
and I thought I could do something with it. So uh, this is the CAD that I did. I cropped the top part of uh, Dennis's photo. There were some striations there. I eliminated those. This has seven colors in it and tweeting. It's five by seven. Again, it could be adapted to any size. It has uh, the darker areas are low pile. The rest is high pile. It's a cut uh, quality. And it's still on the loom in India as we speak. Uh, another result of the slowdown from the pandemic, but I'm hoping to have it move uh, to the United States soon. And again, it's uh, available. Uh, we could do it in other colors. This is a warm uh, color palette. And uh, I really, I, I thought it came out pretty nice in the warm colors, Mimi. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it is. I mean, in just even in looking at these um, kind of, circling back to the customizing the colors like this I can this is would go very well with some popular Ben Moore colors right now and some Pharaoh and Ball and, and um and it's just you know and again it with different colors you kind of you get a, a whole different notion of where what that rug what room that rug is going to be a centerpiece of yes you know and yeah. which is great because it gives you just so many options. Yeah. Well, you were talking about um, colorways and matching to Benjamin Moore and uh, Farrow and Ball. And right now I offer a 600 uh, palm set, uh, 600 different colors of uh, yarn. And this comes right from my mill and uh, it represents the dye colors that they can make. They can also make custom colors, but that would take some time but right. these are set colors, so this cuts down the time uh, of uh, the time of dyeing because they know the colors that what the results of the colors are. Right. And I right here I'm matching to Farrow and Ball and Benjamin Moore, and I can also match to Sherman and Williams. And what's great about this too is is you know especially since right now so much work is being done virtually, that you can work with a, a designer and never necessarily have to, you know, you can initiate the process where they can just kind of tell you what Ben Moore or Farrow and Ball or Cheryl Williams colors that, that they want to do. And it, it just, again, you know, given the state of everything and even without, it just helps you, you know, speed up the process and you can work with anybody anywhere. Well, now that everything is moving to virtual and digital, uh, you know, and we're looking in the industry to cut down on samples as because it's a waste of material and it's hard to yeah. also, you know, dispose of it. We're looking at sustainability. Right. And this is a case where anyone in the country can have the same colors of Benjamin Moore or Farrell and Ball, and I can match them on my end. And right. we can cut down on the time going back and forth on what the colors should be. And then also just kind of the whole as talking about your, oh, do you want to share a little yes. about well, this, this? Well, the other thing about palms is that during the pandemic, us rug design, designers were a little bored. So Rug Insider magazine, <laughs> uh, who also featured uh, Shelley's uh, ribboned uh, flower, uh, flower um, uh, rug, uh, spotlighted my company. And uh, with Dennis's help, we did a bread and roses where the roses were the palms. It's really fun. Yeah, it was fun. It's great. Um, and then I know that you also, you have a, a partnership with Goodweave, if you want to kind of share, because that is something that people really do think about now. Yes, yeah, so the um, rug industry has a very bad history of using uh, children in the mills and uh, forced labor. And so I partner with Goodweave, and my mills are also certified by Goodweave. And the uh, a portion of the uh, price of the rug goes to support the work that they do in um, education and making sure with uh, surprise visits to the mills that there are no children involved. And then circling back to, you know, kind of your, the whole notion of as to really why you started the business or one of the reasons is, is to kind of to, is to make really fine rugs, but at an affordable price point. Can you share with us some, you know, general price points on the, the pieces that we just saw? Yeah, for, for retail, these are some of the, the prices that I have, and there's a range. If 
but I would say sure. looking at the five by seven of uh, ribboned flowers, which is a hundred knot New Zealand wool, a hundred knots per square inch, uh, would be about $73 square per square foot. The 80 knot per square inch uh, New Zealand wool, like in Lisa's rug, would be um, $70 per square foot. And the hand tufted of Adria and Dennis's rugs would be about uh, 59 per square foot. Great. That gives a range. Yeah. And what's the lead time on these? Uh, the hand tufted are about 10 to, I want to say 11 weeks. The hand knotted, depending on the complexity of the design, and if you're adding silk or anything else, could be between uh, 12 and 14 weeks. And then, you know, you want to build in time for a sample, which is about three to four weeks. Right. But it's not crazy, you know? No, no. I mean, it, it is, it's, you know, that's... It's reasonable. It's very reasonable, the time. Well, I think. I think the thing is that when you get a custom rug, uh, you, <laughs> you love it. You know, yeah. you love your rug, and it's and it's definitely worth waiting for. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, before we say goodbye to everyone, though, I I, I want to touch upon about uh, some of the other collections that you have. Oh, yeah. I know you've oh, done yeah. some some other pieces. So, can you kind of take us through some of the other work that you've done? Yep. or have the other collections that you yeah. have in your... The other things that I, I've been working on, uh, this is a dirty stripe, and this is a close-up. It's cotton. It has a very nice weight to it, so it's not apt to roll like right. some cotton durries do uh, that you get in... Um, on the, in I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have one of, Catherine, one of these, and it is, it's a great... It's a nice, heavyweight... Um, and I love it. And I have it in the blue, but Catherine can do it in other colors. And I know that you can customize it too. I can make the stripe solid. We can do many different things with this stripe. It's very adaptable. And the next image is of uh, a Keelum, which is hand knotted. This is, I have two qualities. One is very fine. One is a little less, uh, uh, less uh, fine. And this particular one is four by six feet and it's behind me. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and that took 48 days to make. And that, here's a little video of it. And you can see the fine oh, detail. Yeah. You know, the knots are incredible. And again, there's a little bit of a brash in the, uh, the dyeing. And what are, the, what are the price points for these two pieces? Uh, let's see, the Keelan would be about $22 per square foot. And the Durys, believe it or not, are five and under. Per square foot. <laughs> and then I know you have so, some other, another piece, a completely different, you know, different piece that you did as a wedding gift, I think. Oh, for I forgot about this one. Yeah. yeah. A very custom, custom yeah, yeah. one. This is very custom. This is made in Nepal, 60 uh, knots per inch. And it was based on uh, American folk, um, a folk wedding quilt. So in the quilt, there were two doves holding two wedding rings in their beak. And because this was made for an American and German uh, couple in Berlin, uh, I made it uh, an American eagle and a German eagle holding the little wedding rings uh, in their beak. And then I drew from their bouquet. So it's very, oh. very, yeah. So they're really personable, personable. Yeah, yeah. That's a great, you know. Yeah. It's a yes, great sir. wedding gift. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Very unique. And oh, and the last thing I think was. Uh, I know that you've done some. Yeah, so yes. Yes. You were in Cover Magazine. You're getting yeah. incredible press from Rug Insider, which is a international trade magazine, and uh, I was just interviewed this week by the International Cover Magazine. And I'm thrilled that um, Lisa's rug chittering and chattering yes. got included. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So very fun. Thanks, Millie, and thanks to all my artists. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thanks thank so you. much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, I, you know, I've worked with Catherine a bit, and um, 
not only has it been wonderful to get to know her the last few years, but her work is incredible. Um, I've been to her studio and I've seen the rugs. So I've seen both her sculptures and I've seen Dennis's work and I've, you know, kind of seen the evolution of her rug business and it's, it's really incredible and having, um, you know, worked with other rug dealers and just, and, you know, worked with rug lines and, and used them. Um, you know, she really has a wonderful, wonderful product and um, at a great price point. And I, I can't, I, I can't stress enough about the whole notion of her being able to customize things and what a treat that is to be able to do it so easily and at and and affordably, you know, um, and just even seeing today the breadth of pieces that she has done um, just shows you again the breadth of her talent, and um, uh, you know, really, and also just how much it can be that it can be a jumping off point for so many beautiful rooms. Thank you. So, um, the, our last slide here is we're going to put up is Catherine's email. So please get in touch with Catherine um, if you have any questions or want to follow up with her about any, any pieces. Um, we've also have all of our uh, websites up there if you want to, you know, check any of us out and contact any of us. I'm sure all our contact information will be on the websites as well. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and hope you all have a, a wonderful rest of the day and enjoy the rest of Design Week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thanks. This Thank is you. fun. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Still live. <laughs>